Author is funded by the Pacific Northwest Writers Association, supporting writers from pen to publication since 1955. To learn more about the PNWA and their yearly conference, please go to pnwa.org. Hi, this is Bill Knauer of Author Magazine, and I'm here at Elliott Bay Book Company in Seattle, Washington, with Lydia Yuknovich, author of Dora, A Head Case. Lydia, welcome to Author. It's my great pleasure to be here. I want to just dive right in. Let's dive in deep. You say story is quantum. What do you mean? It means, first of all, I'm a closet science nerd. Okay. I wasn't encouraged to pursue science as a child, but I loved it secretly. But when I said that on the website, what I mean is that storytelling moves through us like particle physics, and that the best stories and the most memorable stories and books and movies and art become part of you, and you carry it around and you tell somebody else. And so there's a physics to shared narrative, and so that's why I said it that way. At its best, I think, books and narrative can be that way. That we take it, we share it, and it's energy that never dies. It just changes yes. forms. I agree completely. And Excellent. We, yes, you like See? I love people who agree with me, too. Isn't it nice? <laughs> Muriel Rukeyser said, yes, so you know the quote I'm talking about, uh, the world is not made of atoms, but of very small stories. Yes. Uh, and I it's agree 100%. Same principle. same principle. And also, it's what keeps us kind of humanly connected during times of national crisis like now. Yeah. <laughs> or it keeps us from annihilating one another at our at our core. We all have love and families and things we care about that we can tell stories about. Uh, so it's also powerful though. I'm not saying it in a like la la juju way. It's powerful in terms of keeping us human and connected. Now I read on your website that your sort of creative life began where many people's begin, which is in kind of tragedy, which was that you had a, a child born, I don't know if it's still born, but she died the day that... She died the day she was born. born. Right. And so, and this began your, in your mind, your creative life. A little bit. Yeah. And that's not unusual that an artistic practice would get born of trauma. Yeah. Um, but I went nuts. Sure. With grief. And the only place to put it seemed to be in chaotic, expressive terms, you know, scary paintings and Ted Kaczynski journals. And right. So, so it really did get born there, although it must have been latent in me. I always liked to draw when I was little, and I loved art. Yeah. Dora the Headcase, a Headcase, mm -hmm. is your first novel. The book you published before that, Chronology of Water, was a memoir. Mm -hmm. I felt that the line between memoir and fiction, especially if the memoir is done artist has an artistic trajectory ultimately is just razor thin sometimes. You realize, okay, so I agree with what you just said, but yeah. you do realize we're in the extreme minority. Oh, really? Yeah. Really? And literary debates out there. Beca all because of Mr. Fry? Partly. You think so? But also because as the, as the form of creative nonfiction has gained popularity in the last yeah. 10, 20 years, um, entrenchment <laughs> has happened about its significance as a truth-telling mode. Um, I happen to be closer to your sentence than, than you, well, maybe you already do know this, but I think the membrane is so thin, it's thinner than skin. Yeah. Dora is your first published novel. Was it your first written novel? No. Okay. There's do another one out there. It's very um, thickly artistic. It's a, it's a gentle <laughs> term for it. <laughs> and so it's been held back by publishers in the hopes that I can build an audience first before we hit them with the thickly artistic book. Right. After writing the memoir, what changed in you as a writer when you went to it? Was, was Dora the next thing you, you wrote? Okay. So what had shifted in you as a writer that, I'm not gonna say let it through, but what, because I think writing a memoir always changes us. Yes. Creatively. Well, everything changes creatively. But. I bet you'll identify with this. Writing the memoir, or I kind of think of it as an anti-memoir because I broke every memoir rule there is, okay. uh, but was a crucible. Yeah. And it nearly killed me. Yeah. Um, but it also, I'm sorry if this sounds gross, it, it like passed a blood clot and opened up creative paths in me that 
I think I had been holding closed. And if I hadn't written those intense personal things, they might have stayed closed. Yeah. Maybe not, but it felt that way. So that was one thing that happened. The other thing that happened is I needed to have fun immediately. After that, yeah. <laughs> I did. It's like, you know, I needed a big, wild vacation after writing such an intensely personal book. And Dora, A Head Case is the most fun book I've ever written in my life. It, it, it absolutely was a gas to write, partly because of the form. It's, it's written in a very old form, which is farce, like Shakespeare, Ben Jonson old form. Okay. Or Brecht. But with a very contemporary. Yes. I wanted theme. to fill an old form uh, with a really crass, intense girl story. <laughs> and crashing those two things together was just a hoot. So what did you learn writing Dora that you're going to bring to your next project? Uh, the idea that it's incredibly important to, to invent some new girl myths. Girl myths. Mm -hmm. Some stories that emanate from power of girlhood. I don't mean like, wow, girl power. Right. <laughs> but that we literally need to start telling new and better stories about all the varieties of of creativity that come out of young girlhood and young anger and young rage and young sexuality and yeah. um, that we've been locked in these old narratives that um, it's really time to, I, now I'm starting to sound like feminista <laughs> and it is feminist um, but what I mean more is that there's a creative energy to youth that it's sort of time we, we let out of the bag. So my next two novels are actually uh, based in that realm. Well, it's changing dramatically. I see it in my son's uh, generation, who's 17 now. Don't you? Well, of course, because the young women of that generation are so much more, I was just talking to my videographer about this, that they're so much more interested in what would now be called nerd culture, which in my youth was entirely male. Yes. But no longer. No. So something has changed that, for me, is quite dramatic. Yes, and it's, um, I made it sound like I'm just talking about girls. It's boys, too. I have a son, and the realm of um, creativity and interest he has don't quite fit the script that's waiting for him to be the boy and the man. Right. And I love it. I love that our children at this point, maybe this is always true. Maybe the children always break out and make of their course. new narratives. Of course. of course they do. But then there's something distinct going on as well that I'm, it's like I want to listen to them and reflect it back to them. I don't want to write about our lives anymore. <laughs> Well, I do think that I do think that um, while we certainly have to teach children how to get about in the world, you know, they 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 do teach us. I think in the end, more about ourselves than we teach them about themselves. Utterly, oh, sister. <laughs> I so agree with that. I would like it not. My ego wants to be the other way around, but I'm, I'm afraid it's not so. Yeah, I utterly, completely agree with that. I wish more people could say that sentence. It's been a great conversation, yeah, Lydia, but we got one more, one more question I'd okay. like you to answer for okay. me. If writing has taught me anything, it has taught me what? Never surrender. Oh, you had that one on the tip of your tongue, never surrender. It's true. It's pulled me out of the pit every single time, out of grief, out of loss, out of joy. It's, it's expression, either painting, writing, music, uh, it pulls you back. Never surrender. <laughs>